Hi there, thanks so much for stopping by. This is Amy and today I'm going to demonstrate painting on a 20 ounce white wine glass. And what I'm going to do is start a the base that I'll be doing, which will be painting the entire glass in this evergreen folk art enamel, which is this one. And I'm going to be using some of my most favorite favorite brushes at all when you're doing glass painting especially when you're doing a solid color is the 3 8 inch glass art by dynasty it's a number 71 these brushes are phenomenal for doing painting where it's just you know one color I would never recommend doing this for the actual designs now when I say that, it's I'm talking about my florals that I do. Not if you're trying to, to do a single color on a design that you've actually, maybe you've drawn or you've posted a, a paper inside and you're going off of that. I don't mean that. But, but with the technique that I actually use. Now I have already cleaned these glasses. And you'll notice at the top of the glass I have placed tape on here just to try to come out with a nice rim and also keeping the line of paint down where hopefully you're, uh, the person who's drinking out of this glass will not actually come in contact directly with the paint or very little of the paint. The paint is actually sorry about that I just love the spam phone calls, especially in your middle of doing a video. I'm sorry, I apologize for that. Anyway, so I'm base coating this. I will allow it to dry for a little bit before I come back over it with the actual design that I'll be painting on it. And one thing nice about laying down a base coat like this is that you're actually going to be creating a base that will allow the paint to be a little bit thicker, creating a more durable design on your painted glassware. And that's important so that the glass would adhere the paint and the design will actually last longer. And keep in mind too, and I try to mention this on all my videos, Make sure you clean your glassware before you start painting on it. I did clean my glassware. I washed it. And if you choose to do you know, hand washing on your gloss briar, you can also go over it with the denatured rubbing alcohol to make sure that the surface is clean. And you're basically just trying to remove any dirt, any oil that may have come in contact with the glass whether it's from your hands or it's sitting on a shelf someplace. Now I buy these boxed up. They're actually shipped to the store that I purchased them from in boxes. And so, you know, they're not actually just sitting out collecting dust. They are in boxes, but they still need to be cleaned. And I'm just coming a little ways down on the stem. You can see that there. I can just leave it plain or when I'm doing my design I might do some kind of a design around that. You could actually even come all the way down your stem if you chose to do that. I'm inspired, uh, this design is, is inspired by a greeting card that I found and I just ended up really liking the design. I'm looking for new inspiration for my painted glassware. I'm trying to make it a little bit different than some of the others. And I really liked a design that was on a glass, or I'm sorry, on a card. And so I chose to do my version of it on the glass. Now, again, it's my version. It's just an inspiration. It's not a, a copy of the actual design, but it's similar. Like I said, you can see how nicely 
these brushes actually do on the covering of the glass in an opaque style. I just, like I said, they're to me are the best. If I were to be using a one stroke brush, I might have to do a couple couple layers, two or three layers of this in order to get the same results. Okay, so there you have it. I'm pretty much done with that. And you can go back over and touch it up if you choose to do so. If you feel like maybe there's some spots that aren't quite as covered as, as you'd like. And just try to smooth out the brush strokes. And there you have it. So we're going to let this dry for a little bit and then we'll be back to continue on with the design process. I like it and I think it's it turned out very nicely. Now this one's dried a little bit. Like I said I can go back over it if I feel like maybe there's a spot that didn't cover as well as I had wanted. It's okay. And I'll just keep it's okay to do that. But I think for the gist of what I'm going to be doing with it, it's nice. It's a nice base for it. Alright, so what I've done is after the glass dried, or the paint dried on the glass I should say, I went ahead and painted the first glass and just giving you a view of it. Just kind of, uh, I don't know, a little mixture of Impressionism. Uh, I don't know, I guess that's what I would call it. I don't like how it turned out, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I painted it. And I hope you liked it too. Here's the gloss after it's dried. And then what I'm going to do is just go through the paints that I'm going to be using now. Skullbush Yellow, the Yellow Ochre, sorry, get that too close, the Yellow Ochre. I'm going to be using some of my Forest Moss. You're used to a lot of these colors because they're pretty similar. And uh, the Warm White, it's something new that I haven't used. Coffee Bean which is a nice brown, a little bit of fresh foliage, um, yeah I do use black licorice, I'm trying to think what do I use that for, and some metallic gold, I can see it there, and I do believe I'm missing one, which is the berry wine. I guess these are most of the colors that I typically use. What I'm going to go ahead and do uh, is start off with my flat brush, which is a 12 inch flat brush. And then I'm also using a liner brush. I'm trying to see here. So both of these are one stroke, but I'm not sure what the size is of this, of this brush. Sorry about that. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I am going to, I'm proud to say this, one of my Dynasty brushes. It's an, I guess these are all, these all must be in the number 71 series. But this is one of the smaller ones. I'm going to use to do the base of the flower. Now keep in mind too that, you know, I'm trying to make these similar, but they aren't going to be identical because they were painted separately. And it's just not a distinct pattern as far as, uh, it's a little bit more whimsical, loose kind of painting than what I typically do. So I'm going to go ahead and just start putting the the petals on the flower using the warm white and I'm just basically just kind of loosely painting it 
as I mentioned um, over the berry wine and then when I want to come in with it a little darker over here I dip it into the berry wine maybe allowing a little bit of the white so I'm going to have some contrast too and the one thing like I said with this is just pretty whimsical it's very loose painting it's not a definite stroke of some sort just pretty much loosely painting the design on the glass so not not a real precise type of painting I guess I just very loose and I'm gonna try to put another flower right next to this one trying to keep it very similar to the one I painted already Now some patterns that I paint when I'm doing more of the one stroke kind of painting, that's a little bit easier to be more precise with the design as opposed to what I'm doing right now. But again, this is just, it's not meant to be uh, real precise. It's just supposed to be loose and just very um, free, free falling, free forming. And you can just come over here. It's okay to overlap over the flower that you did before. It's definitely fine to do that. And I'm trying to do more of the darker color on the out so there is a contrast beside, between the inside of the flower and what I did for the, uh, for the back you know, the, this part of the flower, I should say. And you can throw some more white in there if you want. It doesn't have to be all dark. It can be like that. All right, so then we're going to go on to the next one. And I believe on this three, four, I had four, four buds, or four flowers, not buds. And you can add buds. I was going to do that originally, but I, I'm not on this one. I think the flowers themselves actually filled up the space pretty nicely. I gotta remember to stay on camera here. Sorry about that. I'm trying very hard to keep my painting on the camera. And like I said, while I'm doing this part of it, it's just very loose. This might be a little bit bigger than the one I did originally on the other one, but that's okay. Like I said, if you are a precise person, that's fine. Do it the way you feel comfortable with it. I'm pretty much uh, not that way, so I'm just going about it the way I'm comfortable with. this is kind of a fun way to paint. Like I said, it's just very, very loose. Loose as a goose. Loosey goosey. And I'll just come back over here this way. Maybe add a little bit more white. But I'm still keeping some contrast between this part side of the flower maybe not as much and if you think it's not then just go back over it and just just tap some color into it all right and then for the last one the last little bud here I'm gonna kind of do it down here and it's going to be a little bit smaller I'm running out of room because I made the other one kind of big, but just fine. All right, so here we go. We are going to do that. Just go back in. Like I said, I'm just kind of wiggling it. If you want to make this all look more like one leaf, 
or not leaf, but petal. That's fine. And there's really, I don't have a name for this flower. This is just a inspiration. Like I said, was from a card, a gift card that I saw. And then I thought, yep, yeah, that would be pretty. And again, like I said, it's just an inspiration. It definitely is not identical by any means. do that. Now what I'm going to do is take my liner brush and I'm going to dip into the coffee bean and I'm going to put my center of my flower in just pretending that you can see it, see this part. And I'm just kind of tapping it. I mean you can make adults if you want. I'm just making it kind of go with the theme of the flower where it's just a mixture. I'm doing the coffee bean the school bus yellow and some yellow ochre and again just tapping it in there you can go back in tap some more on if you think that you didn't get enough or maybe you put too much of one color and just continue on for some reason I'm starting with my coffee bean kind of rushing it right now so probably it's not as nice looking as my original but I like being able to show this uh, you know I think having the center show up a little bit does make it a little bit more fun gives it some more interest and like I said you can go back add to it if you think you need to I like this one I think I needed more yellow and then I'll go back to the next one. And I'm thinking that this flower had a big, 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 big center. That's why I'm making it as big as I am. Thinking that it has really fun, fluffy, full centers to it. Does that make sense? I hope so. Nothing else that gives it some contrast, right? Alright, that's not showing up too well. The yellow ochre isn't showing up too well. That's what I'm tapping on right now. It's just a slightly darker, not as vibrant as the school bus yellow. Alright, so I have the centers on all of them. The next thing I'm going to do is tap on the black. my brushes in between it all. I'm just going on with them. So anyhow, basically what I did with the with the black is I'm just tapping it. Um, what I can do is go like this if I want to make it look like it's too branching off. Um, on this one I can go like that. Maybe even do a little bit of a coming out, coming, crossing over. And like I said, this is definitely not identical to the one that I just did. And I can leave it like this. That, and then I'm going to go in and tap in some of the, just to give it some interest, some of the um, berry wine. That one's pretty thick, so it's kind of hard. But yeah, I'll go back in wine. Hopefully you can see 
this. And then I'm going to go in and tap in. And you could use the liner brush for this if you wanted, scruffy brush. But I think you get the gist of it. I'm just kind of going in like that. And I'll go back in. Into the, or go back in and make sure that the that the black shows still. It's just kind of fun. Like I said, you can do it with different brushes. thing that I'm going to do is go in and put some leaves on it. And these are just, they're funky leaves. They really, they truly are funky leaves. I'm going to take my thicket and just kind of go around. They're not supposed to be, you know, precise you know, one stroke leaves or anything like that. They're just funky leaves. And the way this this paintbrush is, it kind of gives a little line. All I'm doing is just tapping and just letting the, the bristles be spread apart. I'm starting off with the thicket. Now you could put a lot of leaves in this if you want. Um, for the purpose of this video, I'm just doing you know sporadically around the around the flower. Again, it's kind of fun because they're. They're just really whimsical flowers, or leaves, I mean. They're not anything, you basically you're just pushing your brush, pulling. Pushing your brush, pulling. That's all, simple as that. So I start off with the thicket. Then I'm going to go back through and just add some of the, oh, what color did I say that was? That's the fresh foliage. And I have a little bit of white again, not, not actually uh, cleaning up my brush. Now you can when you want to take more time to do this. Because I just hate to have really long videos. But it's okay. Like I said, I think you're getting the gist of it. Like that. Just getting basically make them a little bit more interesting than just having a plain dark dark green uh, and there you have it I guess that I think you think that turned out really nicely the final thing that I'm going to do and I don't know what I just did with it oh they're right right in front of my face I'm going to take I have a little lid that I put on my and I'm doing like lining work and I'm just going to go around the top of this just to give it a finish. I like to add a finish to you know when I'm actually doing a design like this where it's painted. I for some reason have a hard time just leaving it unfinished. I guess I don't like the, the rigidity edges when you take the tape off. I need to clean this top off. A little bit of an issue when I first was trying to do these. Like I said it'll get better as time goes on. I'm I'm certain of it because I'll get back into doing this better. And I'm going to finish off where I started on my stem. Now I could have actually painted my stem black or done a technique that looked very similar to these little I don't know if you want to call them branches or whatnot that these flowers are coming off of. But I decided not to. I just like them like this. I think they're they're fun and festive, just like this. And like I said, they aren't identical, but that's okay. They're not meant to be. And I hope hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, wouldn't these be fun to serve your guests? If you're having a party or just having them over, you know, for a drink, 
so fun so much fun or have girls night out have people over have them paint when they come over pretty easy I hope you enjoyed this video of my flowers being painted on wine glasses and these are 20 ounce glasses they're um, meant for white wine and if you like my video please give me a big thumbs up if I can do my thumbs and subscribe like and share I would appreciate it and until the next video have a good evening